You have to talk to me. About what? About your drinking. You've got a disease, Macy. You're sick. That's why we're here. We're gonna do something about it right now. All of us, Macy. Yes. Before it's too late. You're joking, right? I mean, this is ridiculous. No, darling, I'm not joking. Mother, I stopped drinking months ago, okay? I haven't had a drink. Come on, cut this out. Macy, stop. Now, I told your mother the truth. The real truth. What are you talking about, Keith? I know you haven't stopped drinking, Macy. I know you can't because you're addicted to it. Please, don't bother to deny it. Damn you, Keith. Just a minute, Macy, please. No, I trusted you. Now, how dare you go and talk to my mother behind my back? Keith is the best friend you ever had. Only you don't realize it. He couldn't stand to stand there and watch you destroy yourself, and neither can we. No. And we are not going to stand by and watch you destroy your life with alcohol. We're trying to help you, Macy. Please don't fight us. Thank God, a friendly face. Can you believe them, Darla? <laughs> come on, come on, love. let's let's get out of here. Come on. How are you today, Dr. Forrester? I'm fine, thank you. Are you waiting for someone? No, just a table for one, please. <gasps> Excuse me, um, I think I see someone I know. It's okay. Well, is this seat taken? Taylor, hello. Mind if I join you? No, not at all, please. Well, I suppose congratulations are in order. Thank you. How's Brooke taking it? She really thought that Ridge was going to leave you. Is she all right? She's doing as well as can be expected. I'm doing what I can. Good. I'm sure she could use a friend right now. Well, I am the man for the job. Excuse me, Dr. Forrester. Can I get you something? Mm, iced tea sounds good. Thanks. You're not quite as excited as I expected you to be. You mean like you? You're practically glowing. I got what I wanted. Well, you know what they say. Eventually, everybody gets what they deserve. You and I did. And hopefully, the foresters are getting theirs, even as we speak. Getting theirs? <laughs> what? Just desserts, Taylor. I don't know whether you realize it or not, but Ridge pulled a pretty dirty stunt on Brooke last night. What stunt? The belief release form that he got her to sign, or that he was supposed to have gotten her to sign. I think she's on her way to Forrester to confront Ridge about it right now. Brooke? Uh, what is it? Is there a problem? A problem? No, there's no problem. Good. Then if you'll give us our copy of the contract, we'll give you yours. Oh, sure. That would settle the matter, wouldn't it? Brooke, what's wrong? What's the, what's the hang-up? As if you didn't know, Ridge. If you two uh, really want to have a private conversation, why don't you just go over to Ridge's office? But before you leave, we would like our copy of the contract, and we'll make sure you get yours. You are such a snake, Stephanie. And you, Eric. You're not much better. And finally, Ridge, you're the man I trusted more than anybody in this whole world. The man I loved, Bridget's father. You hurt me to the core, Ridge, and that's worse than a lie. That's worse than a betrayal. But I caught you. I caught every one of you. And now you're going to pay. You are going to suffer the consequences.
Tyler, why don't you and I go out somewhere, huh? These people are boring, not to mention rude. Come on. No. <clears throat> what did you say? I said no. I'm not going anywhere, and neither are you. <sighs> Should have known you'd want to tow the company line, Darla. You don't want to upset the boss, huh? So you just dump on me and just to protect your precious little job. Darla's trying to protect you, Maisie. We all are, Maisie. That's why we're here. Why? Because you think I'm an alcoholic? We know you are. Uh, so I have a couple of drinks. Big deal. Come on, has anybody ever heard of happy hour? I am not an alcoholic. You're wrong, Maisie. Well, then prove it. Your life has become unmanageable because of alcohol, Macy. The drinking is affecting every aspect of your life. Now, we're not here to blame you. We know it's not your fault. It's the alcohol, Macy. I mean, Darla is your best friend, and look at the way you just spoke to her. Oh, please. Did I hurt her feelings, huh? Well, she hurt my feelings. Oh, Macy, there are plenty of hurt feelings to go around since you started drinking. Oh, great, Mom. Just blame me for everything bad that's going on. No, that's not what we're saying, Macy. What are you saying? You are suffering from a disease. Alcoholism is a disease, Macy. You need help, honey. That's why we're all here right now. I need a drink. Yeah, yeah, like you needed a drink the morning you were supposed to meet Thorn. You could have patched up your marriage, Macy, but instead you got plastered. And I know you love your little brother, Macy, but you hurt him and you disappoint him when you stand him up. Like that day you got drunk when you were supposed to pick him up and take him to the zoo. You stand me up every time we make plans to go out. You got a hangover, Macy, almost every morning. Do we really have to go on, huh? Your life is a mess. Everything bad that has happened to you this year is because of the alcohol. Hey! Okay. Unanimous. Great. You know, you guys have just totally lost touch with reality. Jim, it must be contagious. I'm getting out of here. You're not going anywhere, Macy. There's something else I have to say to you first. Thank you. What do you mean, the contract that she was supposed to have signed. Rich told me that she had signed it. So you have been in on it. In on what? Oh, come on, Taylor. The Foresters have been buttering up Brooke to protect their belief pack. Well, Ridge blew it. Blew what? His little scheme to steal her formula. Her formula? That's exactly what I said. Ridge must not have been thinking very clearly when he left Brooke's place last night. He took the wrong copy of the contract with him. He left the only signed copy with Brooke. And I made damn sure she knows exactly what it's worth. So what do you have to say, Stephanie? At a loss for words? You certainly weren't last night. Brooke. Go ahead. Say what you're going to say. Or get down on your knees if you think that'll help. Go ahead, get down on your knees. Might as well get used to it. That's where you're going to be spending most of your time from now on. Brooke, you're being childish. Go to hell, Eric. Don't you dare. Don't any of you dare pass judgment on me after what you pulled. So, what do you have to say for yourself, Stephanie? You come over to my home last night, at the worst point of my life, and you cut my heart out, and you carve it into little pieces. You just love to see me in pain, don't you? Love to see the tears swell up and go over on my cheeks. You deserve this, Brooke. You deserve it. That's what you said. Well, you know what? It's all coming back around to you, Stephanie. Oh, God, I have waited for this moment. Six long years. That's how long I have dreamed about saying what I'm about to say to you. Finally, finally, Stephanie, it is my turn. Yours is over. You're finished. You have something else to say to me, Mother? Well, why don't you just say it so I can get the hell out of here? 
You know I would do anything. I would sacrifice anything to help you. Now, please, believe if me. If you want to help me, Mother, then quit bugging me. This is not the kind of help that I need. Yes, it is, Maisie. It's exactly what you need. You just stay out of this, traitor. I'm going to talk to you about this later. Damn it, Macy. How can you turn your back on us? Don't you see that we care? Doesn't that mean anything to you? All right. I mean, what do I have to do to satisfy you people? Just name it. You have a choice to make. What kind of a choice is that? It's a very simple choice, Macy. Either you give up drinking, or we can no longer be a part of your life. Brooke has the signed copy of the contract. Ridge made one hell of a mistake. What is Brooke going to do with it? Well, I told her to go after the belief patent. It's not hers. If she plays her cards right, it can be. What have the Foresters ever done to you? Nothing. But certainly you can understand why Brooke might be a little angry. Well, anger is one thing, vengeance is another. And where does deception fall on your little scale of abhorrent behavior, Doctor? I don't need to defend the Foresters. But I do need to defend Brooke. She has a valid claim on this formula. Valid? In what sense? On what planet? By the letter of the law. What about ethics? Uh, morally, she doesn't have a claim on belief at all. You and I both know, Doctor, that moral arguments are very subjective. Legally. Belief is 100% Brooks. And I intend to make sure that she gets every bit of it. Give my regards to your husband, will you? Me, Rich. And don't ever touch me unless you mean it. And I know you don't. Look, I asked you to sign this document, so don't blame Mother and Dad. Well, I'm sure there's plenty of fault to go around this bunch. Especially with you, Stephanie. I'm sure you're the instigator of all of this. Of all what? This attempt to defraud me. <gasps> Hide the truth. You know, I could probably bring suit against two people. Maybe I will. It's starting to sound like Connor Davis in here, isn't it? So what if it is? You know, I need a man like Connor in my corner. At least he's honest. I can't believe what you did, Ridge. You tried to trick me into signing this contract, which took away all my rights to something I legally own. Brooke, I tried to explain to you what this document was all about. Well, you didn't try hard no, enough. No, wait, wait a minute, Brooke. Belief does not belong to you, and you know it. Oh, well, let's let a judge decide that. Damn it, okay? Brooke. We hired you to run R&D. Developing that formula was part of your job. Oh, is that a fact? Yes, Brooke, it is. Well, then why didn't you tell me about that fact immediately when you discovered the oversight? Ridge wanted to. So why didn't you, Ridge? I'll tell you why. It's the same reason Stephanie told me last night. Because you don't trust me any more than she does. None of you do. I gave you children grandchildren, a product that churns out money like you wouldn't believe in your wildest dreams. And what do you give me? I mean, you give me manipulation, lies, deception. Well, two can play this little game. Say hello to your new boss, Stephanie. You too, Eric. Rich. You're looking at the lady who's going to control belief and forced to creations as well. You're gonna cut me out of your lives completely? <laughs> You're right. Yeah, completely, until you stop drinking. Yeah, just cut me off, huh? We're not turning away from you, Macy. Just the alcoholism. Oh, and what is that supposed to mean? It means that if you're drinking, we don't want you around. We don't even want to talk to you. It means that I can't trust you alone with your little brother, CJ, unless I'm sure you're sober. And I mean stone cold sober. You'll forgive me if I don't believe a word of this. Yeah, well, you better start believing it. <laughs> 
We love you too much to watch you poison yourself with alcohol. That's right. And we are hoping that you love us enough to stop. All you guys can say is how much you care about me, yet you are just so ready to abandon me. It is precisely because we do care that we've given you this ultimatum, Macy. What happens now is up to you. It's entirely up to you. Okay. <laughs> you win, all right? I'll cut down. I won't drink as much. Are you satisfied now? No. That's not good enough. You've got to stop drinking completely. Macy, you have to face the fact that you are an alcoholic and get professional help. Forget it, Jack. Forget it. He's right, Macy. You have to start attending Alcoholics Anonymous meetings. You have to find some kind of rehabilitation treatment. Fat chance, Mother. This isn't open to discussion, Macy. That's our deal. Well, I am not going to stop drinking because I am not an alcoholic. Fine. All right. Then you do what you have to do. And so will we. I'm going to have to ask you to leave now. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean it, Macy. I want you to leave right now. You are going to kick your own daughter out. You're not welcome here as long as you're drinking. Please, leave. Uh, Darla, Saul, would you talk some sense into her? You heard your mother. Those are the ground rules, Macy. We're here to help you. The minute you're ready to help yourself. But until then, I want you out of my sight. Okay. Fine. I don't want to stay anywhere when I'm not wanted anyway. Goodbye, Mother. Nothing. You did the right thing, Miss Spectra. You did the right thing. Don't stress out over this, Eric. Things could be worse. You have no ethical right to this formula. Don't preach to me about ethics. You know what's so ironic about this? I would have signed this contract. I would have signed this contract if you just came to me in the oh, first place. Oh, don't make me laugh. Mother. You stop it and wake up, will you? You would never have signed that contract. Stephanie, you don't know anything about me. Nothing. I know about human nature, and I know one thing it's consistent. You wouldn't have signed that contract today any more than you would have signed it three months ago. And nothing's changed, morally or ethically. You don't own the rights to that belief patent now any more than you did three months ago when you say you would have signed it. Why don't you go ahead and prove me wrong? Go ahead, Brooke. Sign it. Stephanie, it doesn't have to do with ethics and morality anymore. It has to do with practicality. Oh, please. Practicality, Brooke? Yes, Eric, the pragmatics of raising two children alone whose fathers I can't trust. What do you mean you can't trust us, Brooke? I can't trust you because of the way you tried to trick me, Ridge. The two of you tried to build me of something that I legally own. You weren't honest. You weren't upfront about it. And now you expect me to be because it doesn't suit you? You know, I have two children to raise. And they have a future. I want my children to have everything that your children had, Stephanie. Eric Jr. and Bridget are going to have the kind of life that I never had. They'll have that anyway, Bridget. Oh, Ridge, shut up. I can't count on you. I can't count on Eric, and especially Stephanie. I, I can't count on any of you. I have to count on myself. So I'm providing for myself and my children. That's what I'm doing. I'm providing. You said that you were purging me out of your lives. Well, thank you very much. I consider myself purged. And you, Eric, the father of my child, Eric Jr., my former husband, my trusted employer, here's to trust. And you, Ridge, you're the worst of them all. You thought you were so clever by getting me to sign this contract when you were really in love with Taylor and not me. Well, here's to Taylor, and here's to you, and here's to all you friggin' people! You know, there's gonna be some changes around here. And you better be ready for them. 
you damn well better be ready for them. <laughs>